and welcome back to Bookish Theories. In today's video, I would like to talk about Card's Gunshot, focusing on a little breakdown and analysis of both the lyrics and the music video. Gunshot is a song produced by BM and written by both BM and JSF that describes a toxic relationship where love is twisted into a source of pain because of the verbal abuse that the protagonist has to overcome. Now, even if the lyrics of the song seem to be talking about a romantic relationship gone wrong here, the general theme of the song was actually inspired by the constant bullying and criticism that Card have to face on a daily basis. You see, if you're a fan of K-pop, then you probably know that this is an issue that affects almost every idol in the industry, but even if cyberbullying and verbal harassment have been major problems for years now, nowadays more and more people are speaking up about it with the intention of bringing awareness and talking about the consequences that this type of abuse has on their mental health. Idols like IU and Hichu, for instance, have been talking about the issue for years, Dreamcatcher is making an entire series about it, and more recently both Tomorrow by Together Subin and Itzy Stujin have opened up about their experiences with hate comments and backhanded compliments. So even if these are just examples, you can see that no matter which generation or demographics we are talking about, cyberbullying and verbal abuse are issues that can affect any idol at any given time. This issue, however, is much more universal than that, because bullying is a problem that affects millions of people no matter their age, gender or ethnicity. So with Gunshot, Card are diving right into this topic by telling us a universal story of love that traps the protagonist into a cycle of abuse that they seem unable to escape. And to further spread awareness about the issue, BM actually created a new clothing line called Healers, which is a movement meant to create positivity in both the real and the digital world, whose profit will be partially donated to stompoutbullying.org. According to the statement that BM released about it, this is a non-profit organization whose goal is to prevent bullying and cyberbullying and to educate people about homophobia, racism and other types of discrimination. So if you want to know more about it and maybe make a donation, I will be leaving the links in the description down below for you to check out in your own time. This is a campaign that BM created to spread awareness and to take action against hatred. And as it turns out, the movement perfectly fits the topic of this comeback, because as BM himself has stated, the main topic of both the campaign and the album is that words can influence people in many different ways according to how we choose to use them. This is what Away With Words is all about, really. It's about the power of language, but also about the idea that words can hurt like bullets or heal like a medicine, depending on the situation. Gunshot here is the perfect example of that, because in the lyrics, Card expressed the duality of language by defining love as a word that can disguise the selfishness of the people who use it as a weapon. Now, right off the bat, this idea is very interesting, because even if love is something that most of the times is perceived as a positive feeling, in this case it's the very reason why people cannot always find the strength to speak up about their state of mind. You see, if we look at the song from the perspective of an idol, or even from the perspective of a person who is in an abusive relationship, somebody's need to be loved can actually lead them to trust people who don't deserve to be trusted. And when these dynamics come into play, verbal abuse can be perceived as an embodiment of love that controls its victims and doesn't allow them to escape. As the lyrics say, these attacks are like bullets that always hit the target, and this is because the perpetrator knows how to hurt their victim. So even if the latter pretends like they don't care, when the other person tells them that they don't care, it becomes hurtful because all the victim wants is to be loved and accepted for who they are. In this context, love is the chain that traps the victim and the gun that the perpetrator uses to inflict pain. It is twisted and unhealthy, but in a situation like this, the victim doesn't have the strength to rebel, because the fear of loneliness and rejection seems stronger than the pain inflicted by their loved one. In the story that Card is telling us here, the victim wants to escape, but the more they try, the worse it becomes. And this is because the victim is controlled by this unhealthy love, to the point that even when they try to break free, they end up calling for their abuser because without their attention, they feel like they are dying. 
This is a very heartbreaking experience to live through because the lyrics make very clear that no matter what, the victim is bound to suffer. But at the same time, the song also offers a resolution to all of this because in the second half of the track, the protagonist eventually manages to break this cycle of abuse and reconnect with their true self. The love that controlled them up to this point made them forget about themselves and about what love is truly about. But now they can't take it anymore because this love made them bleed enough. After so much suffering, the song ends with Card actually reclaiming their own freedom and escaping the abusive relationship that brought them down. But the video also shows us a different and more tragic alternative to this outcome because right at the end we see one version of Jiwoo shooting the other one with a paper gun, which is a weapon born out of verbal abuse that could eventually lead the victim to hurt themselves as a result of all the pain that this bullying has caused. This, however, is only one possible interpretation of the scene, because if you look closely, the Jiwoo that gets shot is not the victim but the bully, meaning that the scene could also be read as a cautionary tale that is meant to warn the bullies about the consequences of their own actions. If on the one hand the scene portrays a person hurting themselves because of the hate that they have received, on the other it also shows this hate backfiring and hurting the perpetrator themselves. So the real message here is that no matter who you are, hateful language is a weapon that has the potential to hurt everybody involved. Nothing good ever comes out of bullying, it hurts the victim and it hurts the perpetrator, and this idea is also expressed throughout the entire video as well. Because, as Card themselves have explained, the MV actually shows two parallel universes where the members play the role of both the victims and the bullies. In the first universe, for instance, we see that Card are wounded and are forced to sit in front of a set of cameras that is recording them. This is the world of the victims of cyberbullying, it's a reality where the members are oppressed by the system and are portrayed as puppets that are controlled by the people who look at them through the lenses of the camera. The second universe, on the other hand, is a dystopia where crime is everywhere and each member actually plays two different embodiments of abuse. BM, for instance, is both a bystander who ignores the crime he is witnessing and a bully who abuses his victims with a brush of black ink. Soomin, on the other hand, is both a stalker who spies on her victim through the cameras and a bully who harasses people using a sharp pencil as her weapon to spread hate. Joseph instead plays the role of a cyber bully who uses his keyboard to harass his victims, but also the role of a criminal who hides his identity behind the mask, while Jiwoo portrays the embodiment of violent rebellion and the role of a person who uses her platform to spread hateful words. Now, in the video, these two realities are linked together through the lenses of the camera, one side representing the artist in front of the camera and the other showing the bullies hiding in the audience that is watching them. But even if these two worlds never actually meet, these realities are connected through language, which in this context is a weapon that is able to transcend realities and actually hurt people on both sides. This video here is the perfect representation of how hate can reach its victims even when the perpetrator is literally a world apart from them. But the fact that the members play both roles here is a very interesting addition because these visuals here imply that at any given time you can play both roles without even realizing it. Each and every one of us has the responsibility to understand that our words can hurt people even if these people are far away from us. And even if we might have been victims of cyberbullying ourselves, we shouldn't use this as an excuse to do the same. Because this type of hate is something that stays with you and can transform you into the very thing that hurts you. So that's it from me today, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, please think about liking and subscribing. As always, thank you so much for watching guys, I'll see you next time, bye bye!